Okay. Hello everyone. We tried to put this on as live and unfortunately it didn't work because of the uh, Wi-Fi connection. So we are going to be pre-recording this and you'll be watching this in the future um, uploaded to our Instagram account. So it's going to be a brief tour of the Students' Foundation degree show. I'm going to talk to some of them about their work and hopefully we, you'll come away from this feeling like you've, you've had a good idea of what the students have been doing. So let's go in and have a look at what we've got. And it's highly appropriate that the first person we come to is Jenny Thomas, um, who in many ways sourced this space for us. It's where you live as well, Jenny. So would you like to talk us through uh, your work? Okay. Um, so earlier in the year, I was researching um, as part of my practice a painter back in the 60s, a guy called Frederick Hammersby, who used to use colour theory a lot in his uh, work, and he made shapes and out using lovely colours next to each other and everything, and he cut them up at, into squares and then rearranged the squares and just saw how the colours would react off each other, and so that was the sort of springboard of where um, I was going. And so I've used some of his colours for the background um, and then done my own uh, collage and masking with masking tape over the top. Great, and I believe this work has different sides to its personality, yes. that there's yes. a secret hidden side yes. that we can investigate. So if we bring the camera around, have a look. This is rather unusual for a painting. Well, it was, it was kind of site specific, really. We needed something to break up the room. And um, so it, that's why it's double-sided. It kind of fitted quite nicely. Uh, it needed a big, big, something big to fit in this space. And so I thought, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Not the usual size that I'm, I'm used to. Um, so this side is the same configuration of background shapes, but I've just put the colours in the different places to see how it would change having the dark colours at the top opposed to the bottom and the white in the middle, how they all react to each other. And I think something that we can sort of take advantage of with the cameras, if, if we just zoom in, um, you can see that this is a collage of, of what looks like text and photos. Could you explain a little bit about what they are? So some of this is um, <coughs> French newspapers and cartoons and things, and but some of it is uh, papers that I've made myself. Um, those are my glasses. So I've taken photographs of my, my glasses and then done a repeat pa pattern on a word processing document and then just printed them out and they become uh, patterns. And I've done the same with our remote controls, TV remote controls, and there's some of my boots as well. So I've done the same sort of process with my boots. Um, yeah. I think that's great. I think it's, it's your most ambitious work to date. Absolutely. I think highly <laughs> appropriate for, for this situation. A great one to begin with. And I think it's got that real zap factor as you walk through the door being hit by that which is great and, and I, I don't think it's like a divider I, I think it's an integral part of the, the show and the feeling of the space so it's well, well done thank you thank you. Sure. So, you can afford it well. <laughs> next we have Helen here. so you, you muted the sounds of Morton Feldman on your uh, your work there but I mean we can have it back if you want from yeah. there um, Helen, do, do you want to introduce this this kind of installation video work? Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, most of this work, well, the idea came from um, uh, during lockdown when uh, I was limited into the kind of um, materials that I had available. So I started looking at photography and film, um, and in particular, I was interested in the way that um, women artists had been. Um, represented or not represented actually um, through the art historical canon so um, particularly uh, in relation to Jackson Pollock uh, was really interested to I came across a video that was a film that was made by um, a German filmmaker called Hans Mammuth uh, of uh, um, 
Jackson Pollock doing his um, drip and pouring paintings. Um, and when I was researching the film, lots uh, something that really struck me was the the, um, the language and the speech that he used in the film was uh, actually written by his wife, and he was completely incapable of talking about his work without her input, and yet she um, she was a, a famous artist herself, and so she but she never got shown or exhibited, and for me that really struck a chord. So I wanted to make a sort of feminist statement. Uh, a film about, um, it's a parody of that film of Jackson Pollock, but um, uh, with a little feminist twist. Uh, and, and, and I wanted it to be funny and I wanted it to be real. Um, and of course it was filmed at home because we were in lockdown. Um, and then when I was thinking about how I wanted to show the film, it felt right to um, have it in some sort of, rather than just on the wall, uh, a sort of home-based installation piece, which is where uh, the, this sort of came from. No, I think it's great. I mean, is it is it interactable? I mean, can can people yeah, sit yeah, on yeah, it? Of is that, is you that can. I mean, or are you going to get sort of a no, you can a Jackson sit. Pollock on my jacket? Like, so no. it's there. I mean, the thing that that, that really um, excites me about this work is, is just the detail. But I think really what you you've got working here is. I mean, if you can zoom in on this colour, so the, the Pollock's boots have become the fluffy slippers, and uh, he's, uh, his bourbon has turned into, actually looks like quite strong coffee that you've got there, so he probably wasn't totally averse to that either. But, um, I mean, is, is this coming from a position of... Do, do you feel conflicted about that kind of modernist painting? I mean, is it, do you have mixed feelings about it? Does the machismo put you off, you know? Um, no, I think, um, I, I really, I like the modernist painting and it's not a, a criticism of Pollock or anything like that, but it's more just about um, uh, highlighting the fact that women also had a place uh, as modernist painters. And um, I wanted to make that point about the fact that women are, can paint art in exactly mm. the same um, way, even when we're stuck at home and we don't have um, studios and, and all the rest of it. So we can make mm. pillowcases and, you know, it doesn't have to be a pillowcase, but we can make art at home um, without... Well, I, I feel like we should also say it's quite interesting that you're referring to Jackson Pollock's wife Yes. When actually yeah. Lee Krasner Krasner. is a, which was her name, is yeah. is a is a is a very substantial, very important artist in her, in her own right, an abstract painter, but has forever, or for at least in the the fifty years since Pollock died, until she started to assume a, a, a better position in the art historical canon, was always Jackson Pollock's it's wife, fine. wasn't yeah, it? So, so it's good that that's been put back and put right. So. Uh, but I think it, it's a it's a it's a really good piece. It's it's very well the detail of it. If anyone knows the uh, the famous uh, Hans Neymar Pollock video, it, it, it's extremely uh, good the way that you're you're working well, that language. I used the um, actual soundtrack that uh, features in the film um, in the background when I was making my film. So that's some of the actual yes. music. That's great. To nice that. to hear about the Morton Feldman in the afternoon. So that's great. Thank you very much for that, Helen. Well done. Yeah. So we're going to I'll just hit the slipper. Sorry about that. So um, I'm going to talk about Neil Eastall's work here. So could you could you just go in? Because actually this 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 benefits looking at it's a it's a kinetic sculpture. It, in some ways, this work, um, I'm, I'm going to sort of extemporise uh, for Neil on this. He's let's borrow his phone. Um, that this this work, in some ways, it, it, it meshes quite nicely with the dialogue that uh, Helen was creating with a certain type of modernist abstract painting. That I uh, shall I stand up here. <laughs> the, the, and in some ways, it, it's a it's a common theme running through this work. I think that the, 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 although it's titled fieldwork, I think that the the inheritance of modernism and particularly that moment in the fifties that, that's known as as high modernism, I think it, it is it's it hangs heavy over these artists. And I think the way 
everyone is working with it is actually very interesting. And I think what, what Neil is working with here is looking at um, a particular way that shapes, form, materials combine to create space. And I think it's, it's really a very sophisticated piece. I think on the first hand, when I saw this, it was there was a sense of wonder uh, kind of looking because I, I wasn't quite sure how it's moving and it, it's just moving by its own sense of momentum and weight and then here if you can't quite work it out there's a there's a video next to it that's set within the concrete so you have the, the real thing and then a representation of the thing so in a sense it's creating a distance to, to, to the modernist language that it's referring to, the, 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 the work of the 1950s. Um, in particular, people like the English constructivist painters would be uh, a point of reference here for Neil. Um, and I, I find that really exciting, this, this, this two screen, one is virtual, one is real. Two types of space and two types of opportunities for us to enter into that space. So um, I, f I find it... Um, it's a very, very interesting uh, piece to look at, and very interesting the way this little corridor, this fire escape corridor, has been um, repurposed into a showing space. So it seems quite casual seeing it there. You almost are surprised when you come across it. And actually it's useful because it does draw you in. And uh, maybe we look at that in a, in a certainly more intense way than we would have perhaps if it was situated amongst here. So well done Neil, congratulations. <laughs> Moving on, so here's one. Now this is work by Louisa. Come on, there's Louisa. So um, again I'm going to talk a little bit about Louisa. The first thing to say is that in the studio, let's just come in and look at how this is made first. It's actually made with, uh, I believe they're Ikea pencils or, or I suppose in another life they would have been like bookies pens, wouldn't they? Um, and there, there has been an element of them being sanded down and, and configured into this sculptural combination. Um, the thing I would say is that when these were in the studio um, back at the, the art school, the, the points, there was some of these sculptures were, they were, they were points out and uh, while I was trying to social distance in the tutorial, I backed up too far into one and I, I, I actually know uh, what it's like to be put in an Iron Maiden so it's, uh, uh, it's not pleasant. So I'm rather pleased that Louisa has put it this way. Um, I mean, when I look at this work, this, this angle, if you could take this angle, Carl, you know, the, at this angle, it's a fascinating, almost like honeycomb, or, or again, the, that language of a, a certain type of modernist design or, or structure appears on there. Um, but then, as we turn, as we go nearer, we start to realise that these units, they're, they're not um, a kind of product of deep artistic thought. They're, they're found objects, that they're, they're quotidian, um, everyday, quite disposable little wooden pencils. When we turn here, and we actually take this angle, and this is where it's very successful in, in terms of how it's utilising different angles and, and sculptural formats um, on, on this sculpture, is suddenly there, there's, a, there's a violence appearing on here. If we come around the other side as well, um, it, it's, there's an absurdity to it. it. It's quite funny, but on the other hand, it's actually quite threatening. I'm quite glad that it's sort of pushing there. It's almost like a, a hail of arrows firing in. Um, I mean, this, this work makes me, I think in the one hand, when I'm on this angle, I kind of find it a very interesting piece of, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting proposition, the way the shape and the form work on it. I think the way the materials go together, the, the multiplicity of the same units repeating. And then moving here, you go from that very um, detached thoughts about it to this, which is actually quite visceral, and it, it, it looks quite painful. Well, it is painful. I can I can attest to that if you you, you got on the wrong side of it. 
So um, it's a funny piece, it's a thought-provoking piece, and, and I think it's visually very powerful as well. So congratulations, Louisa, well done.